Hey, what's up, y'all? It's the Sly Crow creeping in with another video, and it's finally here, gang. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, four years after the original release of the Final Fantasy Remake Part 1. And so for me, when I did start out this game, you know, Chapter 1 did such an amazing job in teasing you into this open world. And it's definitely much more ambitious than the first game, and which had mainly tight quarters and dungeons in the first game. And so when you do enter Chapter 2, it does a really good job of uh, showing the beautiful town and you know, I gotta say the lighting does look a much improved from the first original game and they did such a good job with the lighting and so when you actually enter the grasslands area this is i feel like it's the the magnus opus of the game and it does remind me of the beginning of breath of the wild when you enter the great plateau and it's just a really dope refreshing experience of you know exploring this vast open world environment and when you open the map on the touchpad you know it just it's just astonishing seeing the huge world in front of you and it's almost like to the level of Elden Ring in that sense. And so you're doing the combat on the mobs and you're exploring the, the world and you have the same combat systems from part 1. It's just a pretty cool experience and it's a very fun game so far. And the side quests that they've implemented in this open world is, is pretty, pretty good to see. Uh, you know, you have those baby chocobos in the field and when you find one, it actually leads you to a chocobo stop so you can unlock and, and you have the fast travel point right there. So that's a pretty cool touch there. I feel like they, they borrowed that element from Ghost of Tsushima. And you know, there's uh, different things you can do in this open world. There's uh, elite mobs you can fight in the world. And there may be another point of interest where you go to it and there may be an encounter with a student faction. So, you know, the Grasslands area had a faction encounter of the Turks and, you know, that was pretty hilarious uh, to see there. So yeah, Square is definitely giving you all the fan service here and, you know, it's a, it's a great thing to see. So let's move on to the combat and Square definitely up the ante when it comes to the combat systems. And now you have new skills to unlock and you have new team up moves in the skill tree. And so for example, you have uh, Cloud teaming up with Red 13, which now allows Cloud to do the range attacks. Uh, so one of the cool things I found was Aerith, and Aerith has a new bodyguard team up move that allows a party member to jump in front of Aerith and to block the opponent's moves, which I found pretty clutch. I did this actually one time when, when finding Serpent's bo Serpent Boss with Aerith, and having this bodyguard ability with Cloud is a pretty clutch thing to do. Alright, so let's move on to the boss fights. And boy, when it comes to the boss fights, Grit did not disappoint in this category at all. And they have to be known for probably creating the best boss fights with cinematics of all time at this point. You know, coming off Final Fantasy 16, part 1 of Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth. Uh, remake was actually pretty spot on as well and so you have here once again bosses with three different stages each time you knock down a section of the health bar you have this cool cinematic and each time you see this boss getting more pissed off and it's like he's either going into a different state or transforming and it's, a, it's definitely an epic feeling to the boss design and so definitely very fun to fight these bosses. Alright so let's take the elephant out of the room and let's talk about the graphics and listen man not, not, there's been a lot of complaints I've been reading about this game when it comes to the graphics and it's definitely not to par when it comes to the current gen games you know imagine going from Horizon Forbidden West to Final Fantasy Rebirth and you're definitely gonna notice a lot of glaring issues here. So I did watch the Digital Foundry review on the Final Fantasy review, the tech review, and they did note a lot of glaring issues here. They did know that the shadow detail in the world and many objects in the environment have pretty low texture details. Uh, they also found many objects in the cities that do not have any light or shadow properties at all. So that's definitely a huge glaring issue. And so for me, I definitely found this glaring issue in the chapter 3 section when you entered this mining area and it seems to be there's a lot of very glaring issues with the textures in the mining area. There's a lot of lighting inconsistencies and shadow details. You know, it's definitely not up to snuff when you compare it to many of the current gen games that are out there right now. And so that's the thing. Is it okay to give Square Enix a pass since this is a huge 50 hour experience? You know, it's definitely clear that they did cut corners 
in a lot of places in this game. There's a lot of low textures there. Uh, but we as a gaming community need to have higher standards. And that's the thing like, you know, when you take into the fact that the PS5 is in the later stages of the life cycle and a lot of people in the gaming community have said, well, where are the next gen games? You know, where are the current gen games here? And so for Square Enix to put out this game, you know, it's a lot of questions that need to be asked here. And one of them being, is this product acceptable for a PS5 experience? You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, you can argue the fact that maybe Unreal 4 had some credibility to this, but, you know, I really hope that Square does make the third part of Final Fantasy VII Remake into Unreal 5. And, uh, you know, we as gamers need to have higher standards. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And this is your boy, The Sly Crow, signing off. Catch you on the next one. Peace.